welcome back. Mick Beardy here. Thanks for joining me again. We are off running around doing our thing. We're playing a little bit more War Tales today. We've got our companions. We've got a main quest over here. We Last time we were tasked by this apprentice alchemist to uh, escort him over to his uncle that is theoretically alive and uh, we got another little just bounty quest uh, we're gonna go ahead and since the bounty quest is is way down here we're gonna fulfill this bounty quest because I think that that is more gonna be more fun because it's further exploration the main quests are nice um, but they're just it's not a super super diverse immersive like questline there's just a not a lot of it um, there's nothing wrong with the quest line in fact there's a lot that's great with it but it's just it's just a couple of lines that you hear from from your quest givers and that's that's kind of as far as you go in to it yes yeah, so these machines aren't working but that's none of your business I guess not. I, I guess you're kind of right. Move along, mercenaries. Or someone has no need of your services. Well, things aren't working, right? Like, why is that? You should focus on this disease affecting the fines instead, mercenaries. Wait, do you know something that we don't know? Ah, are you mercenaries? Are you mercenaries? Good. Very good. Everyone else seemed to hate it. I don't understand. Ah, oh, yes, man. Why do you like it? Why do you like that we're mercenaries? I don't understand. We can steal some wood. And we can go ahead and cut some wood. We need the profession of the woodcutter. Which is nice. It's nice that that's a profession. It wasn't a profession. You just had to have a person that had an axe. <laughs> uh, so you get strength from being a woodcutter. Cool. I'm interested in, like, w how you get better, or, like, what you... Oh, no. That's not what I intended to do. Oh, no. What were they? Were they our cook? Oh, but they didn't cook anything. They didn't cook anything. I can change them. To the alchemist. Yeah, let's do that didn't cook anything. So didn't gain any experience. Sweet. Well, we can come back at another time to cut some wood there. We don't necessarily need any wood now. Oh, we got some boars that spotted us. They might run in after this. Now we ran away in time. I don't mind fighting boars. Fighting boars is great, um, but we don't need any food right now. And they will get us some food. And we, just, we just don't need any food. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can't camp here. I'm checking the danger level first before we do anything else, because if the danger level is high, I don't want to stay here. All right, let's see if we want to craft anything. We can make the next level of tent if we had enough leather. So we maybe could have killed the boars to get some leather, but we need some cloth and some rope, of which we can make things of rope. So we're going to do so. And let's make a couple of fish hooks. Sturdy fish hook that can catch an additional fish. If we had bait. How do I make bait? Huh? How do I make bait? Uh, we can't make a hitching post, which we're starting to buck up on our inventory here, so that might actually be really useful. Let's go ahead and do that. Come hither. Whoa, this is huge. That 
that is a that is a big hatching post. That's massive. We're gonna we should start moving this stuff up off over this way. It's it's useful to put a lot of this stuff together um, because then friends will uh, hang out together, sleep together, and they enjoy themselves more. Oh yeah, this is the um, this is the uh, apprentice apothecary. Which I've always enjoyed that they keep them in your camp. And you actually have to give them food too. Whoever you have in your camp. Because uh, you can get prisoners too. And you have to feed everyone in your camp. Which is very cool. It kind of sucks. But it's also very cool. You can also rest without paying people if you need to pay them. And you can rest without giving people food. If you don't have any food. But they get very unhappy. But we only actually need one person to be assigned to the campsite, the, the campfire. Because we only need two happiness. Actually, we don't need anybody assigned to the campfire. Because if we get the candied fruit to out to eat, then everybody's everybody's happy no need for any uh, any campfire happiness everyone can go in the tent so we can get those uh, valor points 24 out of 24 food everybody's happy so we get five valor points we get oh I <laughs> math is hard ah uh, shoot uh, ah, uh, uh, man. Well, we're gonna go ahead and have another uh, battle or two without that uh, experience buff. You know, man, because we did we did indeed need one of our companions set to be part of the campfire in order to get to that 15 happiness to get to that threshold of uh, experience gained in combat. Let's see. There are other question mark ones, and there are some pretty good ones, but I don't know exactly how to unlock them. I wonder if the frugality is going to crowns came after a battle by five percent. Eh. Not a big deal. Let's go ahead and we'll grab the feet makers too. Ah, it didn't unlock either of those. Ah, poo. We could gain some other. Could have gained some other recipes and whatnot, but we didn't, and that's okay. We'll get more knowledge eventually. Okay, these are the guys in our quest, and if we come up behind him, we might be able to ambush him. AMBUSH! Your companions have just ambushed their targets, and we'll have an advantage in the fight. And it is one dude, a hoodlum, and a poacher. Yeah, these guys are toast! We're gonna crush them. They are surprised, and they have damage taken increased by 10%. Whoa, the leader's aggression has their critical hit increased by 30%. That's, that's big. Mud is a big problem. Required movement is doubled. So we really don't want to have to have too much mud that we wade through. Get up to anybody? No. You're barely able to get up to anybody. If we go right here, are you able to get up to anybody? You're able to get up to anybody? Yeah. 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 Y
to get up right there. Yeah, you can go pretty far. You can get up to there. And if you go there, can you get to anyone? No. If you go there, can you get to... And we've got, like, it looks like a little stick in our way there. Oh, and you can reach around behind it. Good, good. This, I think, will work well. Who on the opponent's side, tent side is going first? This poacher. So, you're going to reach around and tag him right in the back. And get him to be engaged with you here. So that when he goes, he can only do the stepping McStamberston. So then this hoodlum's going, so let's just engage everybody up. Start doing the old wackos. He's going to give them the stab. Which is going to be okay. We're going to move over just a tad. So we can hit Pua! Give him the stab. Yeah, you love to see it. Those crits. Just fantastic. We're going to move over just a little bit. We could have used Wrath to do some damage. Um, problem is, I don't think it would have killed him, and that's really what's useful. He is poisoned. So... Now he's going to take a little bit of damage each turn. Uh, the poison does 5% of their maximum health at the end of their turn. And it is stack. So going to go ahead and deal some damage. If he had crit hit him, it would have been possible then to do uh, a wrath strike on him and kill him. But alas. Yeah, I figured he was going to come over here and attack him. It didn't do too much damage to his health, and didn't engage him, which is interesting. Devious Warrior Wind. Let's see what this does. Devious Warrior Wind deals 7 damage to all units in the area. If this ha attack hits several units, creates a cloud of poison under each of them. That's cool. This guy's, this guy's great. He's wonderful. He is a modern, I don't know, dude, I don't know. <laughs> so we stacked another bit of poison on him. We are going to stab him. Ha ha, got him. Suck it, you nub. And move on over this way. To strike with anybody here. This guy is going to come up here, hit him from the back, and at the very least engage him. So I think he's still going to do this, and it'll create that cloud of poison, ooh, which is actually going to be bad at for Aglet, because that cloud of poison will then hit him, and will actually deal his damage deal the damage to him. So, that, oh, we could do a Wrath Strike here. Let's see if that kills him, which it did. And, um, oh, how much, yeah, how much health does he have left? I have Galvanization, and that's going to give me Wrath. So, no, we are going to be able to deal enough damage to this guy that the poison actually won't tick on him because it won't be the last turn so he won't actually have any poison ticks ha ha still got everybody and I get this dagger now which is sweet I don't know if I want to take it because it deals maybe a little less damage um, and 
puts clouds of poison around, which my guys will then step in, which I don't like. So I don't know if I want it, but it is a very cool weapon. We're going to go ahead and repair everybody's armor. And it's now time to let our companions get paid, which we will do with the rest. We can specialize our warrior into a berserker, an executioner, or a sentinel. Sentinels get heavy armor, and they can do an ovation as their uh, special skill, in which all allies engaged in combat gain repost. And the next time this unit is attacked by their engaged opponent, they attack in return with an attack of opportunity, which is pretty cool. We plan on having a decent amount of people engaged in combat, so that is that's pretty good. Executioner, uh, these two both get medium armor, which is great, but also don't know if they... Uh, I do like heavy armor, and I think that he'll need the heavy armor. You deal three times more, deals three times more, two or three damage to the target. Hmm. I think that means that it attacks three times, and each attack does two or three damage. That's hard to tell, though. Cutting Maelstrom deals two damage to all units in the target area. Attack one time for each unit in the target area. So, like, if we hit one, if we do an area and there's one person, it attacks that person one time for two damage. If there are two people, it attacks both of those people two times for two damage. Three people three times. All three people three times each for two damage. Which is really cool, but it's heavy armor for us. Constitution, strength, willpower. We are going to do either constitution or strength. Or willpower, but they don't have, they're not getting anything for willpower right now. I do also like movement. But we're going to go ahead and do Constitution. Because he is going to be up fighting on the front lines. Hard to be upset with some extra Constitution. It's level 3. We can uh, have this person as a base action do deflection. If they're engaged in combat, you gain a bonus valor point. This is instead of attacking. Every time an attack hits several enemies, you gain one bonus valor as a passive skill. Or every time this unit engages in combat, you gain one bonus valor point. That's probably what we're going to do. I do like the defensive stance. Mm, I do like the defensive stance, especially for like boss fights. But boss fights don't usually get engaged. So, it's not usually useful for them to get up into melee too much. But he could a lot better if he had deflection. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I think that it's probably likely that we need more help in boss fights than we will in regular fights to gain bonus valor. So I think we're going to go ahead and take deflection because the boss fights are probably the hardest things. We're going to definitely take this willpower because that will put us up to 15 points which uh, is that threshold for um, surviving uh, the first time they should die in Rossome, our ranger. All right, here we go. These are, this is where they, these guys really start to shine. Poisoner, strategist, or cutthroat. Cutthroat deals three to four damage to a, a target, and if they ambush them, which is when this unit attacks an engagement from behind, it performs two additional attacks. So you ambush somebody, and they do um, three attacks, dealing three to four damage and 
this is not a, a an attack, so they can start really stacking up on attacks if they um, uh, are able to kill people with this frenzy here. However, the strategist can give them a smoke screen, and enemies engaged in the area are disengaged, and they occur an attack of opportunity from their opponent. So, kind of nice. I usually like to have my units stay engaged though because I'm using a lot of rangers and they specifically are good at um, hitting people that are engaged. Poison Vial applies four poisons to all units in the area. I do like having a poisoner around, but I think I'm going to have one poisoner around. We can do two constitutions, uh, critical hit or movement. We are going to do the critical hit for sure. Get out of here, Constitution. Health, carrying capacity. We've got ponies for that. Both respects. We've got <laughs> these ponies. We've got Flem and Roe Roeos. They're going to be. They're our main wacky ponies. If you know what I mean, you probably probably don't because that doesn't make any sense. Wacky ponies? It's a little late. I'm tired. I don't know what to tell you. They're the workhorses that are there to just be meat shields in front. Meat shields that hold up real shields, as they are in the front line. We're going to come on over this way, see if we can't get to that main quest. We probably can do that before we camp. We're going to set down here. Oh, and our pony leveled up, which our pony getting two constitution. Heck yeah, brother. Yeah, which, yeah, your ponies level up. They level up, and then they specialize at level 3, and they can be a work pony and get increased carrying capacity. Or they can be a war pony, where they can fight and wear armor plating. Which is pretty cool. But, not for now. Not for right now. The uh, war ponies are cool, but... They also don't do what you would think that they would do. They aren't ridden by your people. They are just more dudes to run around on the battlefield with. Can I go up this way? No, I have to come around this way for something, I guess. Let's go over here and find out what this thing is. Ah, another strange tuba. You know, I think that these might have something to do with this plague that they're talking about. I don't know, but it's strange and somehow nobody seems to be looking at them. We are drapers. If you wish to buy fabric, I can assure you ours is of the finest quality. We can buy some leather and cloth, which we need for a variety of things. We've got a bunch of money. Let's do it. Oh, uh, you seem to not be having a good day. Why? Why me? Why today when I thought where well, my wealth was made? Why must fate punish me so? Five years I've spent on this tapestry. This masterpiece was supposed to make me famous throughout Gothenburg. A lifetime's worth has gone overnight. The guard told me to stop looking. They said my tapestry was long gone across the body. Body? A border. Likely never to be seen again. I am left with nothing. Well, that sounds like a personal problem, of which I am not going to help with that. I should have stopped by uh, the town to see if there were any new people for some 
um, uh, some new dudes. Yeah, we've got two tinkerers. You're definitely picking a thief here. Getting the thief rolling. The alchemist gives one dexterity and the thief gives one dexterity. Solid. Alright, Mr. Thievixton, let's use this thieverisms for good measure here. Rotate the lock, uh, rotate the pick, press uh, and click to enter into the lock. The closer the pick is to an opening, the more it lifts up if it jiggles too much. Oh, okay, yeah, it's just Skyrim. Okay, perfect. Cool thing about uh, lock picking, um, unless they changed it, uh, if you lock pick successfully, uh, you just can take whatever and it doesn't count as stealing. So we get all this leather and cloth and this work manual, which is pretty sweet. Oh, and another hidden thing. That's why you always got to check around. There, there was a hidden chest or something. Uh-oh. We do not have very many lock picks to be screwing around here. Let's exit. We'll come back. We'll grab more lockpicks. Come lockpicks. We have a quest. More lockpicks. Let's make like ten of these. Okie doke. Alright. And then we now cleave. We get out of camp. We go back in. There's some hemp. Oh, it's already unlocked. It stays unlocked. That's cool. We had already picked that first one and it stayed picked. Nice, nice. Okay, cool. Has become a thief apprentice. Reduces the amount of susp suspicion gained from all sources. Including but not limited to not getting caught by <laughs> just lockpicking in general. A uh, little trinket and some fish oil. You were keeping these locked up? Like in the good hiding spot? That is strange. But acceptable. Because you guys can hide wherever you want. I don't care. Hide that little, what was it? Like a baseball? It looks like a that's a that's a baseball. Yeah, that's a baseball. Which, by the way, didn't really exist in medieval Europe. Oh, this is tent management. We can kick people out. <laughs> it's a weird way to phrase that. All right, let's go ahead and read this work manual here. One of the nice, another nice thing about knowledge points is if you gain knowledge points outside of experience, it doesn't actually increase the sp experience bar. I think that each uh, bit of experience, each level of knowledge that you get increases the, the amount that you have to gain for the next thing of knowledge by a little bit. But if you get knowledge points outside of this, it doesn't actually change your experience bar whatsoever. You just get the knowledge points which I think was a really good call. Let's go ahead and make one of these torches here, I think. Because, yeah, we don't need any wood for the upgraded tent. We just need some more rope, of which we don't have enough. It's very sad. But we can go ahead and make a torch. Torches are pretty great. We can start burning opponents if we choose to do anything with the torch as an offhand. Problem with burning is that it starts to extend to other people very rapidly. Burning um, just goes from person to person. Danger level is none, so we are good to camp out here. 
we're going to go ahead and use that. We don't need to use any alcohol because we are not planning on making anyone mad. Let's go ahead and use these, some of these fish right here. And some mushrooms. We can go ahead and pay. Paying your, your wages today will make your companions happy. And your experience gained in combat increases by 10%. It lasts until the next rest. Interesting. If you pay on time, you get better happiness and junk. Nice! That's pretty cool. And I don't have anybody attached to the campsite right now, right? At the campfire? Cool. Solid, solid, solid. Let's go ahead and rest. Wages were paid out. Experience is being gained all over the place. Extra experience. Um, gain anyway. So these little question marks will happen when somebody wants to say something. Um, it's not working to where we are able to click one of those guys in that way. In the past, in early access, when you left, it just made you talk to him. Yep, it does in this one. In regular full access to, which is good. I won't last long at this rate. My ribs hurt and I can't see clearly. I can admonish him and admonish <laughs> the others for their uh, inco incompetence. Um, which is bad. Everyone is unhappy and he gets minus one relationship. We can overanalyze our fears and worries which doesn't sound great, but we can sulk, to which he gets the sulky status after the rest of the valor points earned by the troop are reduced by two. I think he probably uh, stops having the sulky status after a little while. I'm not sure. So I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this. And they get, is that, it's just minus three, right? That's not minus three max. Yeah, it's just minus three. So, we get, we get minus four valor points. That well, is very unvalorous. Oh, we have some path stuff to unlock. I think. Nope, not path stuff to unlock, just we're getting more path stuff. Oh, but we are getting path stuff from the various challenges. The Reaper, we've collected 50 resources. We get one PP. One PP? I do like PPs. I don't know what PP does. What does that mean? <laughs> what is that? Discover five locations. Oh, you can. we can complete this as many times as we want, I guess. Okay. And we can spend five... Uh, this is this challenge is to spend five knowledge points. Yeah, each one I guess you can complete them as much as you want. Okay. Level up and gain one purple circle. <coughs> purple circle. I don't. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. Here we go. Here's some of the stuff that I was looking for um, in our regular knowledge tree. Sweet. Okay. After all that traveling around, you can run around longer. Run duration increased by 20%. Companions are less prone to be injured, which is pretty good. Animals have reduced aggression range and give up the chase faster. Eh, don't particularly care. Chances to capture an animal increased by 50%, which is probably pretty good. Troop eats less, three less food. Don't really care about that right now. Cost of items for the Tracker's Guild is reduced by 10%. That's a big deal because stuff there is so expensive. Purging a rat nest also grants 50 influence. Cool, but I want it to be easier, not want to want to want to get more. And plague infested outgrowth sample obtained from each rat nest growth increased by one. That is a pretty big deal, though. That makes it that that makes getting rat nests more worthwhile. Just getting more influence isn't a big deal, but getting those plague infested outgrowth samples. Um, getting extra ones of those 
is pretty nice because those are relatively difficult to get. But for right now, I think that the endurance run is going to be more for ease of life than anything else. Because it's just, it sucks moving around the, the world map slowly, you know. So, we're done there. And unfortunately, we are just about at time. So we've got some wood. And we've got that strange tuber. We've got that wood for the peepee. -pee. I am guessing that uh, it's going to be up in here is where our quest really lies. But, once again, we are done for the day. So, thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for coming on this journey with me. Let me know if this is... Uh, worthwhile, I could speed up some of the uh, minutia. Uh, we don't necessarily need to be reading all of the various quest stuff. We don't necessarily need to be reading all of the minutia of stuff since I know what most of it is. I can just uh, move right past it and not explain or read stuff um, and get right into some of the combat. But then we're missing out on some of that stuff, so go ahead and let me know down in the comments what exactly you're looking for more of, at least from this series. So, once again, thanks everybody for hanging out with us, and I hope that all of y'all stay beardy out there.